is limestone cement used in construction of large structures so limestone cement was very very high quality cement which when mixed with stone chips hardened into concrete now this made construction of large structures easier and faster how did the persian court chronicles describe the sultan so the persian court chronicles described the sultan as the shadow of god Then the ruler who won universal respect for constructing a large reservoir just outside Delhi at Kohna for Sultan Iltutmish. What are the special features of Humayun's tomb? So it was first of all Humayun's tomb. It has a central towering dome and it has a tall gateway that is called Pishtak. What was Mahamandapa? So it was the main hall in the temple where dances were performed. Near the temple built by King Raja Raj Deva, so Raja Rajeshwara Temple is the answer. When was the tomb of Hanu, uh, this uh, Humayu built? So it was built between this is not Hanuman, this is Humayu, 1562 to 1571. Who constructed the Kendriya Mahadeva Temple or Kandariya? So King Dhanga Deva of Chandel Dynasty constructed Kandariya. This is Kandariya Mahadeva Temple. Where was Shah Jahan's capital in the early years of his reign? So it was Agra initially. What is the special feature of Fatehpur Sikri, Akbar's capital? The special feature is many of the buildings show the influence of architect architecture style of Gujarat and Malwa. Then the king who invaded Sri Lanka, whom did he defeat? So King Sh uh, Sri Mara Sri Vallabha, he defeated the king Senawan. what were havelis so they were large mansions of the merchants havelis how did kings win the praise of their subjects so they won the praise of their subjects by building structures meant for public activity such as the temples mosques tanks or wells caravans caravansaries and bazaars What type of structures were built by king and their officers between 8th and 18th century? So during this period, kings and their officers they built two kind of structures. First is forts, palaces, garden residences, and towns, and the second one the structure meant for public activity like the temple, mosques, tanks, wells, the caravansaries, and bazaars. Now write a short note on Kandariya Mahadeva Temple. So the Kandariya Mahadeva Temple did it was dedicated to Lord Shiva it was con constructed in 999 by the king Dhanga Deva of Chandera dynasty the temple had an ornamented gateway that led to an entrance so it had a main hall known as Mahamandapa where dances were performed so the image of the chief deity was kept in main shrine known as Garbhagriha so this was the place of ritual worship where only the king and his uh, kith and kin gathered throw light on how the construction of raja rajeshwara temple was very difficult task so the raja rajeshwara temple was built in early 11th century it had the tallest shikhara amongst the temples of its time it its construction was very difficult task there were no cranes in those days so the 90 ton stone for the top of shikhara was too heavy to lift manually it was impossible at that time so the architects built an inclined path to the top of the temple placed in the boulder on uh, on rollers and rolled it all the way to the top so the path started more than 4 km away so that it would not be too steep and this was dismantled after the temple was built in what phase do you think the policies of rajendra 1 and mahmud of ghazni were a product of their time how are the actions of the two rulers different so the king rajendra uh, looted the temples of the defeated rulers and seized prized statues from them You see these statues in uh, decoration of uh, Shiva temple. Then he did he use these and then he built in his capital in early 11th century. Sultan Mahmud of Ghazni was a contemporary of Rajendra I. He destroyed and looted the temples of defeated kings in order to win credit as a great hero of Islam. Uh, then King Rajendra I constructed temples while Mahmud of Ghazni destroyed it. In this way, their actions were very. very much different from one another write a brief note on the chahar bagh or char bagh built by mughal rulers so the mughal 
emperors were very much interested in literature, art, and architecture. Barber, in his autobiography, he has actually described his interest in planning and lay laying out uh, formal gardens placed within rectangular wall enclosures and divided into four quarters by artificial channels. So these gardens were called Chaharbagh four gardens because of their symmetrical division into quarters. Beginning with Akbar, some of the most beautiful Chaharbaghs were constructed by Jahangir and Shah Jahan in Kashmir, Agra and Delhi. So when was Humayu's tomb built? What are its special features? So Humayu tomb was built between 1562 and 1571. The main features were the central towering dome and the tall gateway known as Pishtak became important aspect of Mughal architecture. This tomb architecture was first visible in Humayun's tomb. So the tomb was placed in the center of huge formal char bag land built in the tradition known as eight paradises or hasht bihisht or central hall surrounded by eight rooms. The building was constructed with red sandstone edge with white marble. Give an account of Shah Jahan's audience halls. So Shah Jahan's audience halls were specially constructed to resemble a mosque. The pedestal on the which his throne was placed was frequently described as the Qibla, the direction faced by Muslims at prayer, since everybody faced the direction when court was in session. So the idea of the king as a representative of God on earth was suggested by these architectural features. So the construction of Shah Jahan audience Hall aimed to communicate that the king's justice would treat the high and the low as both are equal, creating a world where all could live together in harmony and tranquility. Who were involved in building of Qutub Minar? So Qutub Minar is a five-story high building. Or you can say it's, it's a building, but it's a you know, simple structure, very um, the lengthwise it's, it's higher. So the first floor was cons constructed by Kutubuddin Aibak and rest by Iltutmish around 1229. Over the year, it was damaged by lightning and earthquakes and repaired by Alauddin Khilji, Muhammad Tughlaq, Firoz Shah Tughlaq, and Ibrahim Lodi. How can you say that Mughal rulers adopted regional architectural style in their construction of their buildings? You can you have to explain with the examples. So Mughal rulers were skilled in adapting regional architectural styles in the construction of their buildings. For instance, in Bengal, the local rulers had developed a roof that was designed to resemble a thatched hut. The Mughals liked this Bangla dome and used it uh, their architecture as their architecture. In Akbar's capital at Fatehpur Sikri, many of the buildings show the influence of architectural styles of Gujarat and Malwa. Describe how Shah Jahan adapted the riverfront garden in the layout of the Teg uh, Taj Mahal. This is Taj Mahal. So the Taj Mahal is the grandest architecture accomplishment of Shah Jahan reign. Actually, it's India's best crea creations. So he adopted the five uh, the riverfront garden in its in his uh, layout. In its layout, so the white marble mansoleum was placed on a terrace by the edge of the river and garden was to its south. So Shah Jahan developed this architecture form as a means to control the access that nobles had to the river. What is the main feature of Shah Jahan's new city of Shah Jahanabad? So Shah Jahan constructed a newly city, newly city, he named it as Shah Jahanabad in Delhi. So in this city, the imperial palace commanded the riverfront. Only specially favored nobles like his oldest, oldest son, the Dara Shikoh, was given access to the river. All others have to construct their homes in the city away from Yamuna River. Compare the reason why temples were built and destroyed. See, first of all, king built temples to show their devotion to God and power and wealth, to their to just to uh, showcase. Now, King Raj Raj this Raj Rajeshwara, but built Raj Rajeshwara temple for the um, worship of God Raj Rajeshwara. Here the name of the king and god are similar. The king took the god's name because it was auspicious and he wanted to appear like a god. So the largest temples were built, usually built by the kings, where while the other lesser deities in the temples were gods and goddesses of the allies and subordinate of the ruler. So the temple was a miniature model of the world ruled by king and his allies. 
So as they worship the deities together in, together in the royal temples, it seemed as if they bought the just rule of the gods of the earth. So king built temples, but when they attack, when they are attacked or they attack one another kingdoms, they often targeted these buildings. So in the early 9th century, when the uh, Pandyan king uh, Srimara Srivallabha invaded Sri Lanka and defeated King Sena I, he seized all the valuables such as the statue of Buddha made entirely of gold and other golden images from various monasteries. So King Sena II took revenge of this. He invaded Mathurai, the capital of Pandyas, in order to restore the gold structure of Buddha. In the same way, when in the early 11th century, the Chola king Rajendra I uh, built a Shiva temple in his capital. So he filled it with prize statues seized from the defeated ruler. Sultan Mahmud Ghazni of Ghazni not only seized the value of the temple but he destroyed them. He did it in order to show some credit. So this uh, ruler displayed their political might or you can say the rulers wanted to do uh, portray or display their part political might and, and military successes by attacking and looting the places of worship of defeated rulers.